Good afternoon, this is the latest video update for the 30th of July. Continue to watch these two tropical systems here in the Western Pacific. We have severe tropical storm Saula and tropical storm Damri. We start with severe tropical storm Saula or Bagyong Henere in the Philippines, which was last located approximately 300 kilometers east of Basco Batanes, uh, or about 640 kilometers southeast of Taipei, Taiwan. Maximum sustained winds remain at 100 kph with gusts of uh, up to 155 according to JMA's latest update. Um, however, I do want to note that JTWC has already upgraded Saola to a typhoon with winds of up to 120 to around 160 km per hour. So some differences among the uh, forecasting agencies right now, but um, overall the, the system uh, remains ver uh, very slow moving across the um, northern part of the Philippines, moving only at 10 kilometers per hour to the north and you can see in this latest visible image the storm is really consolidated and really organized over the uh, overnight and uh, this morning and you can see actually we have now some sort of an eye signature appearing on the satellite still very rugged and much of the banding is still um, unorganized so to speak on the microwave but nevertheless the system is con uh, does continue to uh, to intensify again over the warm waters here in the Philippines as well as the uh, light wind shear in the region. Um, current warnings as of uh, 11 a.m. actually, this is uh, from Pagasa. Uh, signal number two and number one remains actually for the same uh, same areas as was posted yesterday. You still have number two up for Cagayan, Kalayan, Babuyan, and Batanes groups, groups of islands. Signal number one remains for Isabela, Kalinga, and Payao. Looking at the um, infrared imagery, uh, again showing you the organization of Sao Line again seems to be an eye trying to become better defined on both visible and infrared satellite image. You can also see those uh, convective activities still uh, very broad and actually still affecting much of northern Luzon right now. We haven't received any reports of heavy rain or flooding just yet although Lawag actually reported right around 200 millimeters of rain in the past 24 hours. Um, the National Disaster Risk and Reduction Management Council has actually reported uh, no casualties or no damages so far and they actually think that the recent rains here in northern Luzon are actually a positive and a big help for the farmers here bringing uh, much needed rain in the area without uh, proper irrigation so still uh, looking at some news and if you have any can, uh, please share them with us especially if you are living in uh, northern Luzon in the areas under uh, some sort of signal warnings but overall you can see the broad circulation, the southwest monsoon still bringing rains over the Philippines. We'll thus discuss that in a moment. But you, you can also see uh, outer rain bands actually moving into west eastern Taiwan now. And this is the latest radar from the Central Weather Bureau. And you can see again those outer rain bands starting to move in from the east uh, towards Taiwan. We have now heavy rain advisories for uh, many counties uh, along the eastern coast of the, uh, of the country expect those uh, uh, conditions to deteriorate overnight and last into tomorrow. Again, those um, widespread light to moderate rains and even uh, pockets of heavy rain are evident on the radar. So uh, very uh, precarious situation, especially along the valleys and mountainous areas for uh, raising the possibility of flash floods and even landslides. So continue to, to monitor the news and local officials for the latest uh, warnings in your area. Now, as for the forecast, there has been some sort of a significant shift in terms of the forecast track compared to the compared to yesterday, whereas we were expecting Saola to make landfall here in eastern Taiwan in about two days. Much of the forecast uh, from the agencies have shif shifted to the north, and are now expecting Saola to miss Taiwan entirely, passing between uh, Taiwan and Nishikagijima Islands of Japan uh, by around uh, Wednesday or Tuesday evening. So uh, if it does, then could uh, help Saul uh, uh, continue intensifying and could actually become a Category 3 typhoon according to JTWC. Showing you right now is the um, multi-agency forecast. Again, showing you the shift in the forecast track from yesterday, expecting the system to make landfall in either Fujian or Sh uh, Shijiang province here in eastern China uh, by Thursday morning as a very strong typhoon. So if you are living in these areas, you can continue to monitor the system um, as it moves uh, across. But also, uh, I want to mention the areas here in northern Taiwan and also the islands here in Japan as the system moves across 
in the next two to three days. Again, it will continue intensifying, become a, also a JMA, which is still holding uh, Sal as a severe tropical storm. We're still expecting it to become a typhoon in the next 24 to 36 hours. So um, JMA also expecting a strong system out of this one. As it approaches the islands, it could actually be a category two or even three by then, depending on the rate of intensification. And as, as the islands here in the right front quadrant of the storm expect very strong winds and uh, rough waves definitely um, in the next two to three days. So might want to continue, um, uh, uh, even start preparing right now if you are within this area and even here in parts of Taiwan. Before we move on to the second tropical storm, I just want to quickly mention the um, we had very interesting uh, weather last night in Metro Manila. Uh, we actually witnessed a w some some sort of a mesocyclone actually moving across the central and southern Luzon, particularly here in National Capital Region. This is the um, radar yesterday from the Nash uh, NOAA, our Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazards from Pagasa. You can clearly see this cyclonic rotation. Unfortunately, we don't have the animation here, but you can kind of imagine the cyclonic rotation here. Seems to be an eye actually. Uh, being picked up by the radar and that uh, low pressure area is what triggered the very heavy rains and strong winds that were uh, observed last night across many portions here in Manila and even also here in central and southern Luzon areas. Many uh, areas here reported uh, winds of up to 60 kilometers per hour, uh, heavy rains of up to 100 millimeters per hour. Some areas in Cavite and Tanay here in Rizal actually reporting more than 140 millimeters uh, giving an idea of how heavy the, the rains were last night. Uh, obviously, that resulted in uh, widespread urban flooding. Uh, many dams are actually uh, near spilling level now, particularly here in La Mesa Dam, just north of Quezon City, where the water level right now is 79.82 meters, uh, just 30 centimeters below the spilling level of 80.15. So red alert is still up for many communities nearby that uh, that La Mesa Dam because if it, uh, if it spills and obviously the water will I'm rushing down across the tributaries over here so even uh, major uh, rivers here such as uh, especially Merkina River uh, you might want to check out the latest news on those areas as well um, another dam we have is Ipo Dam here in the Bulac Bulacan area um, fortunately they have closed all the gates now as of um, 3 p.m. this afternoon, meaning they're not uh, releasing any water uh, anymore. But uh, it did open, I think, as much as five gates overnight, giving you an idea of how heavy the rains and how it got near the spilling level in that uh, in the dam. Unfortunately, it looks like we will continue to see those rains across central, southern Luzon, and even here in Visayas. So the southwest monsoon continues to be enhanced by uh, Saola here. You can see that it also still have some clusters of thunderstorms west of Luzon waiting to move through central and southern Luzon. So we could still see some another round of heavy rains overnight, but probably not as heavy as last night. Just keep an eye on, uh, on the um, developments here. Other systems you are watching, um, as I said, Tropical Storm Damry and another invest or low pressure area uh, just southwest of southeast of Guam, we have Invest 98W, but right now not expecting this area to develop just yet uh, due to some moderate wind shear. But just keeping an eye on this uh, system and giving an idea how busy the Western Pacific has become in the, in the latter part of the month of July. Moving on to the uh, other tropical system, we have Tropical Storm Damri. Uh, now moving closer to Iwaro, Iwoto, Japan located approximately 360 kilometers east-northeast of the island there, the entire island of Os Ogasawa are located here. Uh, you can see now some burst of convection, uh, but the syst uh, system is now still partly sheared and uh, battling some dry air to the west. Um, outflow remains strong and we are still expecting the system to strengthen, although not to a typhoon intensity anymore compared to yesterday. I'm still expecting it to probably peak at around 100 kilometers per hour, so just below typhoon status. Maximum sustained winds right now remain at 75, gusts of up to 110. And you can, you can also see the system moving slowly westward at uh, 10 kilometers per hour. Uh, latest forecasts from the agencies remain very good consensus, very close um, agreement with each other, showing you the west-northwestward track, probably 
um, brushing the southern part of Kyushu by early Thursday morning as a severe tropical storm with winds of up to 95 to even 100 kph. And as is the islands here of Japan are located uh, in the northern side of the storm, expect uh, stronger winds and also heavy rains um, uh, by the latter part of this week. And you can see medium to lo medium to long range forecast expecting Saula to make landfall here in eastern uh, China, probably just north of Shanghai, um, by as early as uh, Friday or even Friday evening. Here. So keeping an eye also on uh, on Damri here. Um, as uh, Damri and Saula meet up in this area in about two days, it could. Uh, some models are, are uh, suggesting a direct cyclone interaction or Fujiwara effect, um, but in terms of the intensity forecast, by this time, Saola will be the much stronger, the more dominant circulation. So expect this, we're not really expecting any um, significant interaction between the systems, although um, as they approach, there could be a slight wobble. So just keep an eye on the forecast, continue to monitoring the development of these two systems. And that ends the very long update for today. Again, continue checking out this official agencies, especially Pegas and also Central Weather Bureau for those living in Taiwan and GMA as well for the latest official weather forecast for the entire Western Pacific. Continue giving updates on our blog and also on our wes website, westernpacificweather.com. So please continue to check that out as well. If you have any reports, uh, can email us or just leave, an, leave a comment on our uh, YouTube page, RP Weather. Um, Stay safe, guys. Bye.